Welcome to Mucon's hardware. Many of you probably have heard multiple different stories from users who migrated from the Chinese X79-X99 motherboards to the modern Core i5-i7 CPUs or the LJ1151 mutants. Many of these users claim that their computer became to be more responsive and it reacts faster to their actions in Windows Desktop, in File Explorer, in a web browser and just when doing simple office tasks. Personally, I have been using Jinsha X99 D8 motherboard with a Xeon E5 2698V3 for about a year. After that, I have migrated to Core i9-10850K and I have to say that I have got some sort of a feeling that my computer became more responsive after the migration as well. It is very hard to describe when and how the computer is faster because of the benchmark numbers between these two CPUs are very similar and overall when I'm exporting video from DaVinci Resolve or converting in Handbrake, the performance is also pretty comparable. Initially, I thought it is some sort of a placebo effect, because when you are buying a shiny new motherboard with a shiny new CPU, you install it into your computer instead of the old dusty components, you expect your computer to be faster, and that's why the computer might be feeling faster. And even though you can't say where exactly it is faster, you just warm yourself, thinking that yes, it feels faster. Now I have got all required equipment to do proper scientific testing of this claim and see if the modern Core i3-i5 CPUs are actually more responsive and if they are actually reacting faster to user input compared to the Chinese X99 motherboards with the Xeon E5 CPUs. For this I need three important components. First, I have got a camera which can shoot 1000 frames per second. Second, I have got a high refresh rate monitor, in my case I am getting a 144Hz monitor, ideally you would want a 240Hz monitor, but I have got 144Hz. And the last important component is a modified mouse. In this case I am using Razer Death Adder, which is a gaming mouse with a high refresh or high pull rate. Here I have attached an LED to the button, and then this LED lights up when I connect the mouse to the computer. When I click the button, the LED goes off, and I can record exact moment when the button on the mouse was clicked and see how fast computer reacts to the mouse click. This solution I have got from a YouTube channel called Battle Nonsense. Long time ago, Chris from Battle Nonsense was using such mouse to test the net code and input lag in different games. Right now he is using a specially designed device for input lag measurement from NVIDIA, but unfortunately this device is not sold on Amazon and I cannot buy it. NVIDIA will obviously not provide it to me for free either, because I have just about 20,000 subscribers. Thus I had to go the old school, create such mouse, then record high frame rate footage with my camera, and then sit and count all the frames to figure out how much time the computer exactly spent to react to a mouse click with this mouse. Before I go into the test results, I would like to mention that we are still having war in Ukraine and I still have my friends and family in a very critical situation in there. I am trying to do everything I can do to support Ukraine and my family and my friends are there, and I am very thankful to everyone who has donated something to my PayPal. This money I have donated to volunteers in Ukraine who are preparing food for the front lines. In my video description you will find a few links to the videos to show you what exactly they are doing in Ukraine to prepare food for the militaries and to those who are in need. Thus, if you are donating me any money through PayPal, this money will go to these people. As always, I am also asking you to do everything possible to stop Russian terrorism. In this particular case, I am yet again reminding you that many big companies are still staying in Russia and still paying taxes to the criminal Russian regime. Thus, I am asking you to keep yourself updated to see which companies are still in there and do not support them, do not buy anything from them and don't work for them, don't do business with them. Thank you. For this test I have got myself two different systems. The first one is a standard X99 build. I have got Huanangzhi X99 TF motherboard with a Xeon E5 2690V3 CPU. For memory I have 4 sticks, 8GB each, Samsung ECC registered memory. Of course I have performed Turbo Boost unlock procedure and I have tuned memory timings, so the system is a very typical X99 build. On the other hand, I have Intel Core i3-12100 on Gigabyte B660 motherboard with 4 sticks 8GB each from G-Skill. 
The memory speed was left at its default XMP profile, DDR4-3200 CL14. This memory can be easily overclocked to DDR4-3400 CL14, but this is rather expensive memory and I don't think people who are buying cheap Core i3s will bother buying very expensive DDR4 memory. That's why in this particular test I am using the default XMP configuration of DDR4-3200 CL14. The REST configuration of the system was identical in both cases. In both cases I have used the same SSD, the same power supply, the same graphics card, the same monitor and of course the same mouse and keyboard. In both cases I have got fresh Windows installation so there were no bloatware, no background jobs to affect the performance of either of the systems. To perform the measurements I have got myself three tests. The first one is a simple test with the file explorer. I select a folder and then I select another folder and I record a video to see how much time it takes for a computer to switch focus from one folder to another folder. The second test is also pretty simple. In this case I open Google spreadsheet in a web browser, select one cell and then select another cell. Then I measure how much time it takes for the computer to switch focus from one cell to another cell. And the last test will be a gaming benchmark. In this case I am using Rainbow Six Extraction game, then I shoot from the shotgun and measure the time how much it takes for the computer to actually start shooting after the mouse click has happened. As you can see, these are three different tests, but three very common tasks that both Core i3 and Xeon E5 users would perform on their computers. In case of Core i3-12100 with B660 motherboard, the response time is identical if I use USB 2 or USB 3 ports. That's why I'm going to report only one result. But in case of Huanan GX99TF motherboard, the response time is different between USB 2 and USB 3 ports. That's why here I will be reporting two values. Ok, let's talk about the numbers. Starting with the file explorer, here we can see that Core i3-12100 responds in about 51 nanoseconds to switch selection from one folder to another folder. To complete the same operation, Xeonify 2690v3 on Huanan GX99TF takes about 84 nanoseconds if I use USB 2.0 connection. If I switch to USB 3.0 connection, this time increases to 97 nanoseconds. This is almost twice as much as 51 nanoseconds of Core i3-12100. It is also important to mention that the response time using Huanan GX99TF motherboard is very inconsistent. In some cases the response time is very close to 51 nanoseconds of Core i3-12100, in other cases the response time jumps to more than 100 nanoseconds. Another mystery is comparison between USB 2 and USB 3. For some reason on Huanan GX99TF, the response time is better with USB 2.0 connection compared to USB 3.0 connection. In Google Docs spreadsheet test, Core i3-12100 to move selection from one cell to another cell in about the same time as in File Explorer. This time we have got 52 nanoseconds. Xeon EFI 2690v3 mounted on Huanan GX99TF consumes about 65 and 67 nanoseconds, it depends on if you are using USB 2 or USB 3 connection. Even though the difference between Core i3 and Xeon E5 is not as big as in File Explorer, we still can see that Xeon E5 is slower than Core i3-12100. In this test all three configurations are more or less consistent, nevertheless USB 2.0 connection is still slightly faster than USB 3.0 connection. The last test is Rainbow Six Extraction. Here the system equipped with Core i3-12100 takes about 36 nanoseconds to react to the user input. The same task takes about 40 and 43 nanoseconds to complete with the Xeon E5 2690v3 mounted onto Huanan GX99TF. Yet again we see that Core i3-12100 is slightly more responsive than Xeon E5 2690v3 system. And even though I cannot feel the difference of 4 nanoseconds, some of the hardcore gamers might be able to feel this difference. It's also important to mention that even in this test, USB 2.0 connection is slightly more responsive than USB 3.0 connection. Using USB 3.0 connection we are also getting less consistent results when compared to USB 2.0 connection. It's very hard to say why it's so, but it is what it is. Ok, now let's have some sort of a conclusion. 
First of all, I have to admit that the people who migrated from the Chinese X79 and X99 platform to the modern Core i3 i5 CPUs and were claiming that their system became to be more responsive and reacts to the input faster, they were correct. As you can see from my test, Core i3 12100 is actually more responsive and reacts to user input faster than Xeon E5 2690V3 mounted onto Huanan G X99 TF motherboard. For the X99 users, I can have two advices. First, use USB 2.0 connection for your keyboard and mouse because my tests show that this is a bit more responsive, a bit more faster way to get your input through keyboard through mouse delivered into your computer. And the second advice is don't bother about this input lag. The value is not that significant, and if it doesn't bother you, if it doesn't annoy you, then don't bother about it. You don't need to immediately jump to another platform just because I have done some tests and shown that the modern core i3 i5 are slightly faster to react to user input. Sure, if you feel that your computer is annoying you because it doesn't react fast enough, then feel free to upgrade, but there is no immediate need. If your computer does the job well for you, just use it as is and enjoy it. This input lag testing is taking lots of time and lots of effort, but if the video will be popular enough, I might consider adding this test to my regular routine to test Chinese X99 and other motherboard. With this I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, bye bye.